Hello students, welcome to Legacy AIS Academy. Today we are going to discuss about a new topic that is in news that is about the minerals security partnership, a race for rare earth minerals across the world. So let us first try to understand why this particular topic is in news. So recently a group of western nations they have signed a cooperation to develop alternatives to China to make sure that key industrial supplies are ensured for the industries of this country. Now, this is basically a smaller part of a larger initiative or larger initiative a strategy that is called as China plus one that was in place for last 15-20 years. However, this strategy has been very much emphasized upon almost all the Western countries after the COVID-19 pandemic that led to a significant disruption in the supply chain of the global trade. Basically, this initiative that is the Mineral Security Partnership is a US led partnership However, there are 11 other nations also have joined this initiative and the main aim of this initiative is to bolster the critical mineral supply chain required in several of the industries around the world. Now what is this partnership all about? So as discussed before, the partnership is largely led by United States of America. However, the other western countries such as Australia, Canada, Finland, France, Germany, Japan, South Korea, Sweden, UK and the European Commission is also a stakeholder in that. The main objective with which this mineral, this MSP strategy has been signed upon is to catalyze investment from both government sector as well as private sector to develop strategic opportunities in each of these countries. And the main aim with which this strategic opportunities have to be developed is to bolster the supply chain of minerals which are rare earth minerals and very important minerals. The example of such minerals are cobalt, nickel and lithium. Now what is the significance of this particular initiative? So first as just we discussed before that this is an initiative that has mainly evolving as an alternative to China because as of now China is having a strong command or if we can say China is the main supplier of these minerals as well as rare earth minerals around the world. Second as China did not focus or did not focus that much while excavating or while dugging these uh, mines on aspects such as environmental aspects, social aspect and governance standards. This is something that also these countries are trying to bolster and improve well in the whole mining process. And third, the main objective is to meet the demand for critical minerals which are essential for sectors such as clean energy, such as electric vehicle sectors as well as other coming age of the art technologies. So before understanding that as this particular initiative focuses more on the rare earth minerals and ensure the supply of rare earth minerals, what are the rare earth minerals, rare earth minerals basically? So rare earth minerals are total 17 in number where 15 include uh, 15 are one that is included in the lanthanide group of the periodic table. Apart from that we have two other that is scandinium and yttrium. If you look at this here are some of the names of the important minerals from the lanthanide series that is lanthanum is there. Then we have neodymium, cerium, europium, presidomium and such and such minerals. As far as the India is concerned, in India we do have certain reserve of light rare earth elements. However, the heavy rare earth elements are almost absent as far as the extractable amount of uh, minerals are concerned. So that is why India is heavily dependent on heavy RE elements on the other countries. And this is something that India also want to, that is why India also want to become a member of the supply chain so that can, it can get a hands on the heavy rare earth minerals. Now, if you look at what are the important areas where we can see this rare earth minerals. So overall distribution wise, China has the largest deposit of rare earth metals that is almost 38% of the global reserve of rare earth minerals are in China alone. Apart from that at the second number we have the highest reserve in the Vietnam that is about 18.9%. Third highest then we have in Brazil about 18.1% and then after we had Russia where we have about 10.3% of total rare earth reserves. So collectively China, Vietnam, Brazil and Russia overall they have more than 60% of the world's rare earth mineral. However, as far as the production of these rare earth minerals is concerned, China currently have about 70% of the uh, global share in the production and export of uh, this rare earth mineral. Apart from that, if you look at this particular graph, what you can see that China alone produces 140,000 tons of rare earth minerals every year while on the second number we have US that produces mere 38,000 tons of rare earth minerals. So what we can basically see that if you take 
China as a separate country and then consider all the whole world together, then still China has the largest share in the production of rare earth mineral. And that is why many countries of the world, whether they are developed countries or the developing countries such as India, they are dependent heavily on the Chinese mineral sector. So why these rare earth minerals are so important? What are the areas where it can be used? So first of all, this rare earth minerals is not used in any particular sector. It is Its use is diversified and used in various sectors such as smartphone manufacturing. We have manufacturing of clean energy such as wind turbine, energy efficient fluorescent light bulbs. We have hybrid vehicles. There also rare earth minerals are used for the manufacturing and their batteries especially as well as the fiber optic cables. Not only that, these minerals are used for over more than 200 different consumer products including other materials such as computer hard drives, semiconductor, flat screen televisions, monitors and high-end electronics. And that is why as the world is becoming more and more electrical, electronically dependent, the demand of these rare earth minerals are expected to rise significantly in the coming decades. Now what is the importance of rare earth minerals for India? So as of now, India is being seen as a late mover, a late catcher in attempts to enter the lithium value chain which is uh, lithium is very very important ingredient for manufacturing of electrical vehicles and their batteries and that is why in India currently the government policies also has been framed in such a manner that India is uh, in India's electronic vehicle sector is predicted to be a very very ripe sector for the disruption and second year 2022 is basically likely to be an inflection point for Indian battery technology because several potential improvement to the lithium ion technology is going to occur in this particular year which India cannot miss up. And also the government of India has made an ambitious plan where it want to convert a large percentage of its transport whether it's public transport or private transport from the fossil fuel dependency to the electrical, de uh, electrical vehicle dependency and that is when the requirement of these minerals would also significantly shoot up. So what is the plan the government of India has uh, emphasized uh, regarding the electrical vehicle? So as per the plan announced by government of India, by year 2030, electrical vehicle component should meet 80% of country's two and three wheeler fleet. Apart from that, government also plans to have 40% of its buses as electric buses or hybrid buses by year 2030. And similarly, about 30 to 70% of the cars of India government is planning to convert into hybrid or electrical vehicles by year 2030. So by looking at these numbers, what we can see that why these rare earth minerals and their uninterrupted supply is very, very crucial for the future of India. However, there are certain concerns that India currently is facing. The first concern obviously is that as we discussed, China is the largest producer of rare earth minerals as of now. So India is dependent on China and other handful of countries for certain minerals. and it is uh, and to power its energy transition plant to electrical vehicles that is what we have to depend upon second as far as this particular grouping is concerned the msp india has not been able to get seat or place in the msp as of now that is also one part of area of concern though india is a member of other groups such as quad which is again mainly to um, counter uh, china as far as the defense uh, or the area defense area of indo pacific is concerned so india should also become a member of msp then the supply, uh, we can say uh, the dependency of India on China for the rare earth mineral can significantly decline. And third, the reason many experts believe that why India has not been included in MSP as of now is because India is not bringing any kind of expertise on the table as the other countries are bringing. For example, Australia is in the, a member of this group because they have a large reserve of rare earth mineral. Similarly, Japan is also a member of this grouping because Japan have technology to extract these minerals. So these kind of things are missing in India and that is something we should be focused upon. And India obviously is trying diplomatically as of now to gain a membership of this particular group so that the future of India as far as the vehicles, electrical vehicles are concerned can be ensured. So that is all about this particular issue, MSP. I hope you understood about this topic very well. That is all for today. Thank you very much.